Hey guys, it's Glenn from glenscarcollection.com and today we're driving one of my favorite cars, a car I actually used to own, a 2007 Lotus Exige S. All right, guys, we're inside a Lotus Exige S. I used to actually, a couple years ago, I had a 2007 Lotus Exige S. Let's start the car here. Wow. This one's got an amazing aftermarket exhaust. What type of exhaust is this? Lorini Club Sport. Oh, the Lorini exhaust is the best, I think, Lotus exhaust. All right, so I haven't driven one in a couple years since I sold mine. This one has, oh, so similar to mine, 24,000 miles. Mine had about 20, 22,000 miles. And uh, that's really, I think, uh, good mileage for these cars because it's been driven and uh, you're not overpaying for one with 5,000 miles. So the Exige first came out, you know, maybe I shut the car up just to talk. The Exige just came out, uh, came out in the United States 2006 model year. The lease was 05. 06, uh, the Exige essentially was the coupe. The Lotus Elises were a soft top and you can get an optional hard top. So the Elise didn't come with a hard top standard, they were optional. The Exige came with a hard, hard, hard top standard, uh, no soft top. So you can take the roof off like we have it off, but you can't take it with you. So uh, we left the uh, hard top at home, so hopefully it doesn't rain. Now I had an 07 Exige as well, and there was one dealer in New York State that actually, because they're basically the soft top, is the same, it'll actually fit the Exige. You can actually have holes drilled back here and then put a Lotus Elise soft top. And I had that, keep it in your trunk if ever range and put the soft top on. Now, the 2006 Exige were normally aspirated cars, so they had the 190 horsepower. In 07, they put in the supercharger, which gave it seven pounds of boost and raised the horsepower to 220, and that's why it's a Lotus Exige S220. In 08, they bumped it up to 240 horsepower with an ECU change. Uh, same thing with 09, they bumped it up to 260. Once they got to 09, there were very few of these cars sold, so those 09s are worth a lot more and they have a little extra horsepower. I think the sweet spot for me and the reason I chose the 07 is you get the supercharger, which makes a big difference than if you drive the normally aspirated one. The 06 Exigers are actually slower because of the real active aero with the wing. It actually creates drag and slows the car down. So you definitely want the supercharger. You get the power a lot sooner than uh, the leases are almost like uh, S2000-esque where I forget the red line was like 8,000 something on these cars. Yeah, they are. But uh, I think the second cam doesn't kick in to like six. Uh, 5,000. Okay, yeah. so it's almost like an S2000 where the power is up high. So the supercharger mitigates a lot of that. You get a lot of power sooner. And what's great about this car is all the responses are immediate. So there's no power steering. Uh, you notice it at parking lot speeds and uh, which is fine, and uh, you hit the gas and the car just goes. It's not filtered, it's not going to a computer that decides, does he really want to give it gas here, and all this other stuff. Now, my car was pretty bare bones. I think I had the Touring, uh, I had the soft top conversion, but this has a couple great options I didn't have, like limited slip. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got the track package that gives you the adjustable suspension and the harness bar back here. And uh, what other options did Tra this car have? Uh, traction control. Oh, traction control, yeah. right. I think I did have traction control on my car, if I remember. But I think it was more like an engine management traction control, right? Mm -hmm. It was just like... Uh, the turn it off is right here. Right, right. It like limits the RPMs or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, But a really amazing car to drive. Now, they're very extreme cars. If you look at car faxes and ownership history, it's not uncommon for people, these cars to change hands every year. They're just extreme cars. And uh, it's certainly not for everybody. I like extreme cars, and to be honest, this car was a little extreme for me. Uh, it's very low to the ground. Again, there's two, basically, besides the doors and the, uh, 
the hood, there's really only two big body panels, the front clam and the back clam. So even parking lot damage, hitting a curb in a parking lot like this could be a $20,000 clam. And a lot of times insurance companies will just uh, 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 cancel the, uh, how you doing? Hey, I just saw another Ferrari down, the, well this is not a This Ferrari. is a Lotus. <laughs> Isn't that a sports, uh, sports car exhibit or something? No, no, no we're no. just driving this car, that's all. Yeah, Thank it's you. his car. It's, it's his lifetime. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Maybe not even in the next one. <laughs> but what is it? A it's Lotus. a Lotus. Lotus. Yeah, 2007. I admire the engineering. Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks. You, you too. You too. So this, that was a perfect example because when you have these cars, nobody will ever leave you alone. So luckily in Jersey, you can't pump your own gas. You have to send the car. But every time I take it to the gas station, you have a new best friend. So here we are sitting in an abandoned mall parking lot and somebody comes up to us to talk to us. So that get used to that. If you don't want attention, uh, you know, don't get this car. Another thing is there's no rear view. Well, there's a rear view mirror in this car. And my joke was it only showed you the supercharger. There was nothing to show you. But uh, DOT mandates that you have a rear view mirror. So... Uh, uh, the owner here took it off because it's really you don't need it but uh, so th that kind of makes it challenging instead of an A to B car and there are people that daily drive these cars I actually have a friend who daily drives uh, an Exige I think it's an 07 like this and you know he's got crack bumpers and everything because if you start going over speed bumps and parking in parking lots people back up and don't see you and that's how a lot of these cars get wrecked so uh, there's a lot of compromise it's more of an A to A car you take it out for a fun drive Put it back in your garage or you take it to a cars and coffee or a car show you couldn't take it to this mall if uh there were actually people here and the stores were open because some suv in front of you backing up you won't even show up in your in their backup camera that's how low to the ground this is so enough talking uh let's drive all right so let's start this here all right you tell me where we're going okay the clutch is nice and easy you know the uh the as far as the drivetrain goes, left, it's it's bulletproof. It is, uh, you know, Toyota drivetrain, Celica GTS motor, essentially, with a Lotus tune, Here Lotus ECU. Okay. <laughs> the shifters aren't the best. The shifters aren't the best. For a car like the Lotus, you would think they'd have a better shifter. The worst shifter is the 05 model, so I think there was a recall done on the shifters where they fixed them. That's right. car and driver about 4.1 seconds zero to 60 and about a 13 flat quarter mile as you get at higher speeds the car does not accelerate as fast because that big wing in the back actually creates drag available limited slip I used to autocross mine I actually autocrossed it without a limited slip in the track package and uh, it's such a light car at about 2,000 pounds even the supercharger adds about 60 pounds so I believe the weight is just over 2,000 like 20 27 I think is what it weighs you can really track this car all day long and not really go through brakes because it's a uh, it's a very lightweight car when I tracked my M3s or my Z06, you went through brakes because they were much heavier cars. How do you not 
not drive this car all the time, or do you? <laughs> I try yeah. to, as often as I can. Now, how long have you had this car? I've had it for two years, approximately. Okay. And how many miles have you put on it in two years? 7,000. Oh, wow. So yeah. you've, really, you've really driven this yeah, car. Yeah, I do drive it as often as I can. I actually daily drove it for two weeks. Oh, wow. When my Audi was in the shop, so. Yeah, so now you have an Audi S4. We're gonna review that car as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, VJ really has the best of both worlds because he's got one car that could do everything. Now I say again, we, we've only been driving this car two minutes. That's actually my neighbor. Oh, it is? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that was the guy that had the Elise? Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> but strangers will do that to you too. So you bought it with 17,000 miles. Correct. Two years ago. Yep. And do you mind saying what you paid for the car? Uh, I paid uh, 51000 Okay. And where did you find it? Uh, I actually found it on cars.com. Oh, okay. Uh, dealership in Colorado. Oh, so it was a dealer. Yeah, and they shipped it to Delaware, and I drove down to Delaware and uh, drove it back two oh, hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, why did they ship it to Delaware as opposed to shipping it to... I wanted to drive it home. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So the great thing about this car, it's really unfiltered, so there's no sound deadening. We have the roof off, so it's windy. And there's, uh, there's no wind blocker <laughs> here. But you hit the gas and it just goes. It does exactly what you want it to do. The pedals are close together, so you can certainly heel toe the car. I'm just not used to it, but I think it would be no problem. It's much easier to see. I'm telling you, I never take the roof off mine because I'm not that handy and I was afraid I'd never get back on. And uh, I'm looking at the traffic lights actually looking over the roof line here. And I can't see behind me. Well, you have uh, you have different rear view mirrors, yeah, right? There are RLS uh, convex, con uh, yeah, convex mirrors. Okay. So it uh, eliminates the blind spot. Okay. Which is really big in these cars. Yeah. So, oh shit. They even I stall it once in a while. <laughs> Now, this car lives for the turns. Now, my car had a stock exhaust, so it was dominated by a supercharger wine. Where this car, I don't hear as much supercharger because the exhaust is so loud. Let's go. Your neighbors will hate you if you drive home with this loud car. Okay. should have sold my car. <laughs> clutch, the clutch is nice and light, very easy to use even in traffic. Uh, you know, the gear shifter isn't the best, it's very notchy. Sometimes it's hard to tell if you're in first or reverse. You want to avoid manhole covers like the plague because it goes right to your spine. Now, I play ice hockey. I thought I had a bad back for ice hockey. As <laughs> soon as I sold my car, my back got better. And my car had, mechanically, uh, powertrain-wise, it was fine. Uh, you know, I had the battery go dead, but that's probably because of lack of use, maybe the owner before me. Uh, so I had to replace the battery, which is really tight to get in there. And it's a smaller battery, if I remember correctly. You had to have, find a smaller battery to fit in there. Right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. What made me sell my car is uh, I tried to get out of the car once after a car show and you press the door handle here. I pulled on the door handle and it broke off in my hand. <laughs> so now I was in my garage. I was in my garage with the roof on and I parked up against the wall. I had to actually crawl out the right side of the car to get out. I thought I was going to have to kick the windshield out to, to get out of the car. my car 
car fixed. And luckily in Jersey, we have a great independent Lotus mechanic because the dealer network for Lotus is awful. So I had to, basically my door wouldn't stay closed, so I tried to like tie it on. And I had to drive about a half hour through stop and go traffic and red lights. I needed three hands, one hand on the wheel, one hand to shift, one hand to hold the door open. So every time I went to shift, the door flew open. So that was kind of like the last draw for me because all the little things started driving me crazy. Yeah. My air conditioning didn't really work. The air conditioning will keep the car about, at least the one I had, will keep the car about 15 degrees cooler. So if it's 70 out, it's great. The air conditioning works fantastic. If it's 90 out, it's like, it's hot in your car. And uh, the guy told me when I bought it from, he said, oh, if you drive this car in the summer, he says, you gotta be like, you know, hardcore. And I was like, what? I bought it in October. <laughs> and I'm like, I told everybody, I found a Lotus with an air conditioning working. And then when the summer came, it was it was brutal. Yeah, people think air conditioning is an option. It's actually not. It comes with the car. Yeah, it's <laughs> optional if it works. Yeah. That's what's optional. The, the dealer network is horrible. Uh, most of the Lotus dealers in this area have gone out of business, have closed up. really drive, that's the driving experience. Oh, yeah. Cause it's so claustrophobic. There, once you're actually sitting in the seat, there actually is room here. It's a lot roomier than you think, but getting in and out is hard. A lot of leg yeah, there's a, there's a ton of leg room. We have enough space. I used to joke that this was the only car that I could adjust the rear view mirror while I was driving. So I could just reach over with my hand and adjust it. And it's manual, there is no adjustment, right? That's correct. Yeah, so you actually have to do that. I mean, you should be parked when you do that, but. These cars do have some snap oversteer. They're mid-engine cars. And if you let your foot off the gas, it can uh, do a 360 on you. But it does give you a lot of warning. I autocross mine, so I highly recommend doing a track day or an autocross with it. It does give a lot of warning for understeer before it goes to that snap oversteer. And I thought it was easy to catch. Again, you're driving in Exige, so you should know that that's coming. So you just gotta be careful. You don't wanna lift uh, mid, uh, mid-turn. this video now I really 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 regret that I sold my uh, Lotus XEGS it was a fantastic one-of-a-kind car and uh, I'll probably never be able to buy it back but uh, and it was just for sale recently the car that I used to own uh, again thanks for watching guys be sure to subscribe be sure to give this a thumbs up share this video with your friends so our channel could grow and leave a co positive comment below thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time